G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we continue our New Year's resolution series where I'm going through all of the 18 clubs and I'm working out what are some New Year's resolutions for them going to 2024 that will ultimately lead to them being a better side. Now, if you are looking for your own club, I'm doing the Geelong Cats today, but we do have a playlist on this channel and I'll leave an icon up in the top right corner of this video where you can go find your own team. But for now, we're going to talk about the Geelong Football Club who are going to be an interesting one. Again, I feel like I say... Every video that this one's interesting, but to different extents they all are. But the Geelong Footy Club is an interesting one because they've been such a good side for such a long period of time. We've always been waiting for, is the drop-off coming? Are we there yet? In 2023, we saw them fall to their like, second worst ever finish the year after winning a premiership. So there's some justifiable belief that this could be a bit of a turning of the tide for the Geelong Football Club. But I'm not completely convinced, but we're going to go through in this video some things I want them to try and achieve this year. Some of them are going to be resolutions with a bit of a longer term view and some of them are going to be short term ones as well to get them to be a better side in the coming season. Just as an aside guys, if you are new to the channel and are not yet subscribed, I would love if you would consider doing so for all uh, all kinds of AFL content we're doing on the channel at the moment. My analytics tell me about 2,500 people this month have discovered the channel, but only a very small fraction of those people have actually subscribed. So if you are enjoying the content, it would mean a lot to me if you did subscribe. Okay, let's get into these resolutions. I've picked eight for the Geelong Footy Club to try and improve their overall position. So the first one is about uh, more of an immediate term view, and that is about finding more midfield ball winners. So obviously Joel Selwood retired uh, this time 12 months ago, or just to tick over. And uh, since then, the midfield has struggled at times, and it didn't help that uh, one of their other best midfielders in uh, Cam Guthrie only played six games this year through injury. But the stats do tell the tale. And Tom Stewart was by far and away their best ball winner this year as an intercepting defender, which just shows that the, the midfield, the engine room, wasn't quite pulling its weight this season in the absence of two important midfielders, like I said. Cam Guthrie still averaged more possessions per game than any other midfielder with just the 22 which isn't a lot of production. Um, not to criticize his game in general, but just more demonstrating how little Geelong's midfield unit as a whole get the footy. And like I said, he only played six games. To compound that, the midfield with the next highest average possession tally uh, was Isaac Smith with 21. And again, he has retired. So beyond that, you've got to look for Tom Atkins with only 19.4. And we're starting to see a trend here where a lot of the midfielders at Geelong aren't really getting their hands on the footy. So in terms of 2024, it'll just be about finding a few more players in the midfield to get their hands on the footy, which will help overall. Again, like I said, mere possession counts I know are simplistic. Uh, that being said, this still is a symptom of a bigger problem. The next resolution is related to the first one, and, and that is to simply expose the younger midfielders of the uh, of the list that they have. So they've obviously recruited Tanner Braun, and we have seen him a fair bit at AFL level, and he got a bit of time in the engine room for sure. They've also drafted Jai Clark with pick eight, I think, in the 2022 draft. So there's, there's some talent underneath waiting to come in. We've seen a little bit of Mitch Nevitt too. And in more recent times, they've drafted Sean Manor as well. So that's four young players that I'd like to see Geelong get a little bit more time at the coalface because that may not translate to, you know, improve performances as a team or as a midfield dynamic in 2024 but with a longer term view I think this is something they start need to start doing now. Another player that I am going to have as a separate resolution is Max Holmes. Uh, in, in particular just just facilitating his evolution into into the player that they want him to become and, and most specifically I mean is he a wingman or is he a genuine midfielder? Because I think we've seen a little bit of a mixed bag from Max Holmes, particularly in 2023. He has classic uh, wingman capabilities, but we have heard this talk about him beca uh, becoming a more permanent midfielder going forward. And I go back to last year's preseason, and in one of the games, I think behind Tanner Brun, he had the second most center bounce attendances of any Geelong player, which does suggest that they are earmarking him for that sort of role. We did see a little bit of exposure there in 2023, but I think overall what I'm saying here is 2024 is it's where they need to push that evolution along a little bit, considering the, uh, well, the midfield performance that the Geelong has, has seen. In terms of output and production, Holmes has kind of improved in a pretty linear way. And in 2023, he had his uh, career best season statistically with 19 touches a game and three clearances. So a big bump up in clearance numbers there. However, he did only go at 64% uh, in terms of his disposal efficiency as well. So he's got a bit to work on, but I would like to see him spend more time at stoppages in 2024. The fourth resolution is for the Cats to really capitalize on the, the immense firepower they have up forward. So uh, we know the tall forward combination they have out there is probably one of the best in the competition. 
In fact, it may have been the best performed in terms of goals this year. Uh, either way, we're talking about Tom Hawkins and Jeremy Cameron, who combined for more than 100 goals. Uh, when you consider as well, Ollie Henry supported that with 41 goals. Their, their forward line actually really did deliver this year in terms of firepower, which is incredible, really, when you consider all the other things I've talked about in this video, the other parts of their side that didn't go well. Their scoring power in particular is as a massive strength. And that's when you consider as well, Tyson Stengel didn't even have as good a season as he did the previous year. I think he kicked 27 goals, which is still solid by all means, uh, but a bit of a drop off from his previous year. Brian Myers was fantastic with his goal assist, didn't kick that many goals himself. In fact, he only kicked seven. Uh, and when you consider as well, Gary Rowan kicked 18, Dangerfield kicked 11. All of these players are players who could have kicked more goals this year. But anyway, my, my real point on this issue is just to capitalize on the fact that they have a really talented forward line and the age profile of that forward line, even with Hawkins towards the end, or uh, well, very close to the end rather, Jeremy Cameron, obviously, uh, I think he's about 30 years old. Even beyond that, their, their forward line talent is still going to stack up. So um, harnessing that strength and giving them enough supply to do the damage that they're capable of, it will be a big focus in 2024. The fifth resolution I have is to find a genuine Ruckman successor, okay? So my logic for this is that Reece Stanley is 34 or will be this year. Uh, Blitzarves is 33 or will be in 2024. Um, and Blitzarves, again, obviously isn't a full-time Ruckman. He plays a variety of roles. So I Ideally, he's not uh, not going to be considered a genuine ruck in that sense. Uh, but when you consider that the two other rucks that they have on the list are Toby Conway, who does look promising, and I've heard good things about. He has only played one game at AFL level, and we probably will see him more next year. Mitch Edwards is the fourth one who they've just drafted. So long story short, I think this is a vulnerability for them. Now, the young talent is good. Conway and Edwards are really right. Um, for, well, particularly Edwards, I've seen more of, I'll, I'll admit, but it's not so much a talent thing, but I consider the vulnerability of uh, Reece Stanley being 34, and in 12 months' time, is he going to be around? Maybe. He might be. I think he's out of contract. So this needs to go, you know, two ways, to be honest. Conway, I'd like to see a little bit more at AFL level this year to, to facilitate a little bit of a, a transition, even if Stanley's not going to retire at the end of the year. Conway needs a little bit of exposure now. I'd probably be recruiting one, a mature age one at that, um, just to help this transition along, allow Blitz Harves the freedom to play in roles that he's better at. I think finding a ruck solution this year is important for Geelong, whether it be by finding out that Conway is ready to be the number one ruck this year, which is probably a little unlikely, or recruiting one. I probably, in an ideal world, they'll do both. The next one is to at least explore the possibility of adding mature play to their list. So we know in particular that they're linked to Bailey Smith as a potential trade at the end of the year. Uh, one thing I'd like to see them do is uh, explore the free agency market properly because similar to the point I made about Richmond in their video, I think the Cats would love to be able to recruit some mature players to help this transition of an, of an aging list, but they do have a lot of youth and they do have a lot of veterans and it's probably about bridging that gap to some extent, which is why a mature age player would be great and a free agent would be ideal if they can find a way to sign them without giving up any of their draft picks. So a few options would be Jared Berry, Andrew McGrath, um, Ollie Florent. I don't think these are necessarily realistic, but nonetheless, I think Geelong should explore these possibilities. We talked about Bailey Smith. I think Todd Marshall also will be a free agent at the end of this season and kind of makes sense with when you consider where Hawkins is at, at this point of his career. If they wanted to go some more uh, you know, cost-effective ways, uh, one player I do think they should go for as much as it would pay me as an Eagles fan is Jermaine Jones, who is a Geelong local, and I think adds something different to what Geelong currently have in their back half with some genuine speed. And again, would be an unrestricted free agent and relatively cheap. A few other money ball options would be like Sam Berry from Adelaide. He is out of contract, I believe. Connor Stone hasn't really got his career going at GWS, but one in particular that did catch my eye is Ned Moyle, who is a ruckman for Gold Coast, who's only played the two games. Now, I think Gold Coast rate him, but if they could prize him loose, uh, I think there's, there's some options here for um, the Geelong Footy Club to improve their list at a relatively reasonable price. The next resolution I have is to uncover a late draft gem. And I, I, the reason I bring this up is Geelong is so good at this and has been for a number of years, um, decades even. And, you know, all good premiership lists are built on late drafting and Geelong have done it better than most clubs. Uh, even recently, um, none of these are necessarily stars, but, you know, Grian Myers was a fairly late pick. Uh, and he has become a genuine gun, you know, probably in the All-Australian conversation in 2023. Even Ollie Dempsey and Brad Close, to different extents, have been successful. Dempsey's only played the seven games, but both of those were rookie selections. So if they can sort of replicate this sort of form they have of picking up late picks and turning them into good players, 
that will go a long way to easing this transition. So I'm more talking about guys I've already got on the list. So there's some later picks that they have that they there's already they already exist on their list. Sean Manor is probably the most obvious one. Not super late. I think he went pick 36. Uh, nonetheless, a, probably the most realistic option as someone I could see coming in and being a gun because of his VFL pedigree. Uh, but then there's George Stevens, Oliver Wiltshire, Lawson Humphreys. I don't know too much about the last two. Uh, but you know, if they can unearth one of those as a, at least a role player, I think that would be a good win for them. And another option is Emerson Jacker, who uh, they picked up in the rookie draft and see as a potential key back. Phoenix Foster is someone they picked up 12 months ago as a young, tall forward ruck, if I'm not mistaken. So out of the glut of names that I just mentioned, having one of them rise to the top this year, or even two, would be a huge boost for Geelong. And finally, this one is a little bit of a uh, broad one, but I've just put plan for retirements and just have replacements somewhat in place for guys like Tom Hawkins. I'm not saying necessarily this guy will retire or any of these guys, but Hawkins will be 36. Duncan and Gary Rowan will be 34, as will Reece Stanley and Zach Tui. They'll be 34. Cam Guthrie, 32. Again, I don't don't think that's a realistic retirement this year, but these are all guys that are sort of nudging into their mid-30s at this point. So having those replacements in place will be really important. I talked about the midfield transition, exposing those young guys, but you know, maybe a young key forward to replace Hawkins. Could that be Todd Marshall? Could that be Ollie Lord? I can't remember Ollie Lord's contract status. Reece Stanley is a ruckman again, right at the back end of his career. These things, the, the Cats will need to consider these with their list management moves. And I think staying in the first round of this year's draft is going to be really important. I know there's talk about Bailey Smith and they should. I'd probably support them getting Bailey Smith, considering their list profile, but at the same time, in an ideal world, if they can keep pick what is currently pick seven based on 2023's ladder, it could be later than that. I think it is a really important pick that they take when you consider they missed first round is in 2020 and 2021 due to the Jeremy Cameron trade. Uh, in 2019 as well, their first pick was Cooper Stevens, who is now on Hawthorne's rookie list. I will point out they did pick up Sam DeConing with their second pick in 2019. But either way, it's been a while since they've had a prolonged access to talent. And I think they've made a good start with Jai Clark, Connor O'Sullivan, and they've traded in Tanner Brun and Ollie Henry. But I would like to see them take that draft pick, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, guys, that is just my look at Geelong's 2024 season. As always, I welcome your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Keep an eye out for the other teams I'm going to do with this series, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.